Really okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here for this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel. Before we get started, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So would everybody please rise? And Councilwoman McDonough, would you lead us this evening? Okay, hey, thanks, Sue. All right, thank you all for being here this evening with us at, in, at the meeting, and those of you at home for watching this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel for Wednesday, May 10th, 2017. And for the record, all board members are present with us this evening with the, uh, our town clerk, Ann Spofford, all the way down to my right. All the way down to my left is Greg Fulchetti, the Carmel Town Attorney. And we have our Highway Superintendent, Mike Simone, is with us and representatives from the Carmel Police Department as well. So um, what we have tonight is a, a dual meeting. We have two, we have a voting meeting first. It's a special voting meeting, and then we have the town board work session. So at this time, I'm gonna ask for a motion from a board member to open the town board special voting meeting. So moved. So moved by Councilman Lombardi. Second. Second by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the special <laughs> town board voting meeting is now in session. And the first item is a resolution authorizing entry into contract with the Carmel Fire Department Incorporated. And I'm going to ask Councilman Schneider to uh, read resolution number one, please. Whereas appropriations have been made in the 2017 town budget for entry into various contracts for the provision of various services to the town of Carmel, and whereas a public hearing was duly held on said contracts on November 2nd, 2016, and copies of said contracts are on file in the office of the town supervisor, for the inspection and review of all town board members. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes the town supervisor to enter into and execute on behalf of the town contracts with the following contractors for the services indicated in an amount not to exceed that set forth below. The contractor is Carmel Fire Department Inc. The service is for fire protection and fire protection district number three and the amount is not to exceed $707,000. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough, Councilman Lombardi, Councilman Lupinacci, and I'll second that too. So, um, Ann, would you please uh, do roll call vote? Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And we have a representative of the Carmel Fire Department here with us tonight, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. We'll, uh, we're going to attempt to have a new contract for next year early, late this year, so we'll have it in place for January of 2018. Thank you. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, next resolution tonight is a resolution authorizing emergency repair of the Town of Carmel Highway Department tree truck bucket truck. Councilman Lombardi, would you read number two, please? Mm -hmm. Sure, resolve the Town Board of Town of Carmel upon the recommendation of Highway Superintendent Michael Simone, accepts the proposal of Q's of North Franklin, Connecticut, for the emergency repair of bucket of tree truck number 53 in the amount not to exceed $6,894.30, which is attached here to and made part hereof. Second. And be it further resolved, the town controller, Marianne <coughs> Maxwell, is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget tra budgetary transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer the resolution as read. Right. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mike Hangel. Yes. Just if you if contact the controller's office tomorrow and speak to Marianne, and they'll go ahead and process the check, and it'll be ready for you to be picked up on Friday. Okay. So Friday morning, sometime, stop by the office and, and you can pick it up. All right. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the special town board voting meeting for this evening. Um, is there any, any members of the audience here, public here, that would like to comment on either one of the two agenda items that we covered just now, the resolution items we voted on? Okay, there being none, I need a motion to close. Second. Okay, so move to close the vo voting meeting, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good night, Ian. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I need a motion to open the town board work session. Second. So moved by Councilman Lombardi, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay, first item is a review of the Town Board Minutes of April 19th and May 3rd, 2017. Unless any board members would like to question the uh, or discuss the minutes further, we're going to move on to number one. Okay, number one on the agenda, Lieutenant John Dearman is here to discuss with a proposal for the Mayapak Falls Volunteer Fire Department, the Mahopak Volunteer Fire Department. This is to consider an agreement for emergency use of the Town of Carmel Marine Police Boat for uh, Lake Mayapak. John. Uh, last year, members of Mayapak and Mayapak Falls Fire Department approached the chief about <coughs> getting permission to use the police boat when it's not in service in order to respond to emergencies on the lake. <coughs> Mayapak and Mayapak Falls have apparatus that they can use to respond to boat fires out on the water or out on one of the islands. They also have dive teams and emergency divers for rescue operations. Um, we thought it was wise that in the event that a Carmel officer who's trained to be a Marine officer isn't available, take the boat out um, to save time from them, having a trailer, a raft, everybody can respond to McDonald Marina, have access to a key, take the boat out, and perform any emergency operations that need to be performed. I met with the couple chiefs of Mayapak and Mayapak Falls and worked over uh, the agreement that you guys should have in front of you by email to uh, Mr. Fulchetti, and he wrote up the agreement. Yep, yep, yep. The, I, I read through the agreement today. There was only one, there was only one question that I had, and, and maybe you can clear it up for me. The, the president of the uh, Falls Fire Department is who? Well, Randy Compton is the president of the Board of Directors. That's who we signed. Yeah, that, that, okay. So he's, he's authorized to sign it as the president of the Board of Directors. Okay, that was my only question. The rest of it looked pretty good. Board members, do you have any questions? Comments regarding the agreement. I think this is this is good. I think it's great because it's a it's an additional resource that's available to the fire departments in the event that they're needed on an emergency out on Lake Mayapak. So it would just add another marine boat, patrol boat out on the lake, and uh, I think it's a great idea. I do too. I think it's because there's yeah. a lot of people out there on the lake. So thank yeah. you guys. Yeah. So so you'll so John you'll. Uh, Make sure that the proper training and instruction of the boat is, is taken care of. Yeah, we're still finalizing who's going to be certified operators from Maypac and Maypac Falls, but uh, we'll get it taken care of, and I don't see it as right. being an issue. And, and right. you'll, you'll approve the operators at the recommendation of the lieutenant or the police chief. Okay. Right, so he just put... Oh, he just put Got that. Got that on, got that on, on tape? Uh, I know you yeah, saw advertisement. Yeah, good idea. I took it off of your desk. <laughs> Hey, John, the only thing that, that, that I would suggest, and you've probably already spoke about this, that the boat, because it, it does sit for quite you know, lengthy periods of time and not being used, that it should probably be exercised once in a while. You know, once every week or 10 days, somebody should go down and run the boat just to make sure that if it's in, in the event that it's needed, they can just jump in it. Batteries are going to be fine. We, we have a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll work out a schedule for, and I believe they're going to want to do training exercise on it as far as the dive team and how to operate when people are actually under the water, under your boat. So it's not going to be used for, it's a nice day, let's go out on rescue patrol. It's going to be used for emergencies. I used to operate that boat, so I'm I, aware. I'm aware. I volunteer to go out on it with Mike on the weekends. and That would qualify and under it's a nice you, day, let's go out there. on sunny patrol. That, would, that wouldn't qualify? No. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, can you give the chief the mic? What did you say? Well, no, <laughs> never mind. No, leave him over there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so go ahead with that, and we need a resolution, right? Authorizing the entry into yep. the license agreement. So okay. we'll do that for next week if the board's All right, We don't need the names of the operators to enter um, into the agreement. If you have names, we should do it in, within the uh, initial uh, authorizing resolution, who the operators would be, and then if you add them or remove them as, the, as during the course of the duration of the agreement, we can do that by resolution. But can, you have, can you have names for next week or no? Yeah, I think we can have names. Uh, what's the program names now? Okay. So then I, my suggestion is to give it to Lieutenant and then he'll give it to Greg. Okay. If there's, Greg, I guess if, if there's no names yet, if they're not quote unquote qualified names, you can leave it open to right. filling it at the board's. Right, but the, I, correct. The idea was that this, by Memorial Day, you wanted to have it 
we'd like to yeah so be ready to go for Memorial Day weekend certainly do the authorization to enter into the agreement and if it's possible to approve the operators in that initial authorization you'll do it yeah. you can modify it subsequently one way or the other by adding or deleting names at, in, at future meetings as well do, do we need to have names listed I'm just thinking because we could be doing a lot of resolutions as people drop their training as people leave the department people come we, in the we, department for the summer? You do it for the for the active list of all the departments in terms of uh, the volunteer fighters so this should be a slightly smaller list I would think right yeah we can add them to the list and follow up with that and Joe may may pack will have a list as well. Patrick, you'll have you'll have a list too for John? Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Thanks, John. Thank you. Yep. All right. I don't think it would be by accident. Okay, next so item on the agenda is number two, Mike Simone, Town of Cromwell Highway Superintendent. This is to consider a request to purchase parts for the highway department. Are you qualified? I am. Phil? No. You should. It's only four hours of training. I just need Thank you, Mike. Good evening. Good evening, Mike. <laughs> uh, our two flail mowers, which uh, will be start going out now uh, during the growing season, uh, 2001 and 2004, New Hollands, uh, and they have uh, these Alamo mower heads on them that reach over the guardrails into the side of the roads. Um, they're in use all summer long from May until probably August when the growing season site stops a little bit and then they're back out again in the fall. Um, they take quite a bit of abuse. Um, these two parts are a bit costly, but they are on OGS contract. Um, but one is the mower head for one unit and one is the arm which we have welded many times. But it's now gotten to the point where we need to replace the whole arm. So um, I don't have my backup in front of me, but I think we're talking about combined $28,000 worth of parts. 27, so, yeah, I think that was the number if I had in back of my head. Thanks. So I'm looking for authorization to go out and purchase these parts um, to get these tractors out and, and run. Yeah. I have no problem with it, Mike. It, it's it's in within the budget of my my repair budget, so. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a heck of a lot cheaper replacing the arm and and the mower head as opposed to replacing the whole machine, which is probably well, over hundred thousand I mean, dollars. The good news is that the New Holland they're really low hours on them because they do they go around slow on the side, so they they'll last forever. They really will. Um, the mower arms um, again, it's a seventeen foot reach that hangs on the end of a mower, so you can think of what kind of torque Just, is going out there. Um, yeah. It, yeah. it takes abuse, but imagine. again, <clears throat> 01, 04, out there every summer. It's, uh, it's, yep. it's a good bang for the buck when you think about it. So. Yep. And the growing season, the growing season is starting. It will be starting as soon as the sun pops here and we get above oh, 50 yeah. degrees, so. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, any questions, comments for Highway Superintendent regarding the Parts that he needs to repair the uh, New Holland mower? Nope. Nope, I'm good. Jonathan? No. Good. Thank right. Thank you. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Mike. Okay, next item on the agenda, number three, the Lake Seacore Park District Advisory Board. This is considered a request to approve and authorize the distri distribution of their annual newsletter. And there's a copy of the newsletter that board you have in your backup packet. Um, so welcome to summer newsletter. It talks about boats, where the boats can be stored and kept, the new pavilion for all the residents to use at the beach area. And there's a new play set, nice play set. They have a photograph of it mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, that's nice attached job. here. Yeah, they did a really nice job. And there's dates to remember. Beach area opens weekends only, limited. And that's uh, from 1130 to uh, 8 p.m., 1130 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's on 527, so May 27th. The beach is opening at the Lake Secor uh, Beach area. 529, May 29th, Memorial Day. June 23rd, beach opens full time. So on June 23rd, the beach will be open full time from 11.30 to 8, 8, uh, 8.30. So on 527, the beach area opens only on weekends, limited swimming. And the 23rd, it opens full time all during the week from 11.30 to 8. 
and uh, September 4th is the beach closes full-time weekend swimming is available so it's a nice newsletter there's a picture on the back with uh, a fishing contest that they have somebody caught a pretty nice sized bass in Lake Secor and the sunset over Lake Secor is a photograph of that too so it's a lot of information on the newsletter and we prepare it we distribute it and it's paid for by the residents of the Lake Secor Park District the postage and the cost of uh, preparing the letter and mailing it out is paid for them by them also. All right. Any questions regarding the Lake Secor Park District newsletter? We do one for um, Lake Cassie. Uh, probably what, semi-annual, like John, twice a year they do one, or is it? Sometimes four times. Yeah. Four, at least twice. Yep. Right, Susie, any questions? Yeah. No, they're looking great. Okay. Yep. All right. So we'll we'll take we'll make sure uh, we get that ready to go out and it'll be mailed out to the residents. Okay, next item on the agenda, number five, I'm sorry, number four, is the Lake Secor Park District also. This is a request to set rates for the seasonal part-time employees, and they have a list of the rates here for the guards. The head lifeguard rate this year is $20 per hour. A lifeguard is $14.50 per hour, and two, it looks like two junior lifeguards uh, for two years, so they would have had, this is the second year of lifeguarding, it's $12 an hour, and the junior lifeguard, which is, would be the first year of lifeguarding, is $10 per hour. And the rates for the guards will remain unchanged this year and should be as follows, which I just read off. So, and this is from Carl Bremer from the Lake Secor Park District. Any questions regarding the uh, hourly rates for the lifeguards for the Lake Secor Park District? No. No? Okay. All right, next item on the agenda. <coughs> Number five, this is the Lake Cassie Park District Advisory Board. Consider request to set rates for seasonal part-time employees. This is very similar to the Lake Secor um, rates that I just read off. 2017 Lake Cassie, lifeguard and gate guard pay rates. Lifeguard is 16 an hour. Uh, junior lifeguard is 13 an hour. Two-year lifeguard, I guess it would be, is 15 an hour. A, a gate guard is 14 an hour. That, that would be a two-year gate guard, meaning they were there last year and an entry gate guard for the first year would be $12 per hour. Mm -hmm. So the rates vary depending on the, uh, the amount of time, the years that they've uh, been working during the summer months for Lake Cassie Park District. It, they increase as the amount of time increases of them working in that position. So any questions regarding the Lake, Lake Cassie Park District lifeguard and gate, gate guard rates? No. No? Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is number six. Rich Franzetti. Okay, our, our engineer Rich Franzetti is here for number six and number seven. Number six is to consider request to authorize a change order number one for contract C236. This is for Carmel Sewer District numbers one and three, infiltration and inflow remediation. Rich? Good evening, thank you. Um, as Kenny mentioned, uh, this is for a change order for contract C236. As the board is aware, the reference uh, project was awarded to Green Mountain Pipeline Services Incorporated. Contracts were signed and a notice to proceed was issued by the engineering department in October of 2016. Due to weather and engineering review time, the date for substantial completion uh, is changed to July 14, 2017. This delay was not caused by the contractor. In order to ensure appropriate time for the contractor to complete the project, we recommend that the board authorize uh, the work change order, which would change the uh, completion date on or before October 9th, 2017. It is a no-cost change order, um, which provides for modifications of the task frequency uh, and additional services to be provided by the contractor. Okay. All right, thank you, Rich. Any questions for the town engineer regarding the, um, the I, I remediation work that's ongoing? And it, as the engineer stated, this is a non-cost change order. It's good enough for It's me. just dates that yep. are being changed. The only ones I vote for. Okay. <laughs> All righty. All right. So let's move on to the next item. Rich, uh, that is, give me one second. Consider request to award bid for the purchase of town vehicles. So this is for contract C-256, purchase and maintenance of vehicles. Bids were solicited for this, for this project on Tuesday, uh, May 2nd. Town Clerk opened the attached single bid form from Park Ford of Mayapak uh, in the amount of $105,364. It is for the purchase of four 2017 Ford Escapes. Um, the details are there with um, 
different colors, charcoal black uh, inside, exterior cutter is white, seating uh, surface is a cloth, uh, rear and front mud flaps. The price includes the standard Ford model, Ford model year 2017 warranty, warranty and the Ford Protect premium maintenance plan. Uh, it is a five-year plan or 150,000 miles, whichever comes first, with a service frequency of 5,000 mile interviews. Vehicle service shall be ready for pickup by the town of Carmel on or before 3 p.m., provided that the vehicle was delivered prior to service 10 a.m. on the same day. As the bid is contained a servicing element, the field of potential bidders was limited to a 25-mile radius around Carmel Town Hall. The limitation resulted in a list of 11 potential bidders. A public notice was mailed to these bidders uh, well in advance of the availability of the bid documents and followed up by phone calls. Two dealers picked up the specification and Park Ford was the only one who bid on the actual uh, project. Uh, there are sufficient funds in the um, control uh, for this. It was budgeted and we recommend that we purchase uh, the <coughs> vehicles and the maintenance contracts from Park Ford in the amount of $105,364. Okay, great. Thank you, Rich. These are the, as the board is, is aware, these were the vehicles that were approved uh, last year late last year by the town board for the various town departments for their use, building department, engineering department, the assessor's office, and other uses for uh, town biz conducting town business. Um, the vehicles that we have, the Ford Focuses, they're 14 years old at this point, and they're, they're in poor shape. In fact, one of them, I believe one of the wheels actually uh, dislodged from the vehicle. So. The focuses are not in good condition, so these new vehicles are replacing the, uh, the older Ford focuses. And they're Ford Escapes, they're all wheel drives, so they can be used 12 months out of the year without uh, issues as far as getting around uh, in snow or inclement weather. Any questions or comments for the board regarding the purchase of the new town vehicle? Hey, Kenny, I'm, I'm fine with the purchases, but are we going to, when we get the, um, the vehicles, are we going to put on that little I guess it's a GPS mm -hmm. thing that um, Mike has on some of the trucks. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yeah, okay. Mike, locator. The, the locator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. yeah. yeah That's we... what I would like to okay. do. All right. Um, yeah, we could certainly do that. Mike, Mike, uh, how they're working out on your vehicles? Yeah. Okay. So right. be, before, you know, I don't know. The well, when they come in, when, when they that. come in, we can have the vendor, okay. the vendor that supplied the GPSs, the locators for yeah. the highway vehicles. Mm -hmm. We can contact them and get a price from them. And we're going to put the town of Carmel logo on yes. them also. The logos are going okay. on them. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Right. Those yep. were not part of this bid package. The big package was for the purchase and for the maintenance right. agreement. Yeah. So those yeah. are going to be aftermarket type of yep. additions the that we have additions. to add on to bring our cars. Yeah to what we have our standard, which is the logos and everything else that we're using yeah. now with GPS. So maybe we could start working on those two items now, so when they come in, we don't have to get them in, they drive them around for a while and then do what we can do it as soon as they come in. Yep, Time we can do that. Okay, sure. perfect. Yep. We'll take, Rich, can you follow up on that? Yes, sir, it's All on, right. my, it's on my notes. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, we, I think we have one, yeah, we have one item left on the agenda that's, uh, Number eight, Councilman Frank Lombardi. This to consider a proposed local law banning the sale and possession of synthetic drugs in the town of Carmel. So Frank, you want to um, take over from here? Sure, so a few years ago in the town's continued effort to address quality of life issues and um, the serious problem of drugs in our community and amongst our youth, we had talked about passing uh, a law with regard to synthetic marijuana. So that was about four or five years ago. Uh, Pretty much right after we spoke about working on it, mm -hmm. the state passed a law at that time. So that was, we didn't pass it, obviously it, was, it became a state law. <coughs> but since that time, these manufacturers now, and you can go to any gas station or delis and stuff and they sell all these kind of things, they've, they've changed their chemical compounds to skirt the law, okay? So some of these, um, synthetic marijuanas, and they don't just include the tobacco products, but there's potpourris, there's herbs, incenses, spices, and aromatics, really have been the source of uh, some serious problems with the youth. Besides deaths, they cause erratic behavior, uh, extreme illnesses, and you see it all the time on TV, and you read about it in the paper. 
two legislators who I'm friendly with in Westchester, um, John Testa and David Tubiello, who are great guys, passed a law just this past week in, in Westchester County, which expands the definition of uh, synthetic drugs and synthetic uh, can cannabinoids. Um, and we have, we're gonna, what I'm proposing is a law to mirror what they did in Westchester. Uh, one of the reasons would be to obviously broaden the definition of banned substances as chemical compounds of similar structures or that mimic the effects of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and other drugs. One of the reasons why I, I uh, spoke, I had called uh, David Tubiello on it and I texted with John Testa, we're going to do it in Carmel, or I'd like to do it in Carmel. One of the reasons is, you know, we border Yorktown and Somers, so many areas in the town of Carmel. So I don't want to have to go, it's banned in the entire county of Westchester, but they can cross the street, cross Baldwin Place, or cross you know, 118, and now you can buy it in, in the town of Carmel, which, which is not outlawed. So um, there are civil penalties for those who sell it, range from $500 for the first offense uh, to $2,000 for a second offense, and a second violation would be a misdemeanor. So it's a very broad, and, and, and Greg has the, uh, I gave Greg the legislation. They, from the working piece of legislation that they had to the final version, the definitions um, of what the synthetic drugs are is just, it's, it's big, which is great. So, so hopefully these manufacturers are gonna be like, you know what, it's not worth it. And whether they say that or not, I hope that those people in Carmel, um, businesses that sell that kind of stuff, realize that it's not worthwhile for them to do and um, we are serious about protecting our kids and protecting our youth. Um, and just like the board um, has worked with our schools to bring the DARE program, Frank Chabarro, into the middle school, and we continue with our um, yearly, which is about to take place soon, with our yearly discussions with our eighth graders, uh, not to mention the middle schools that the DARE program that Frank has, with regard to heroin and opiate ab abuse this is just one more thing that we need to, uh, we need to address. Um, so the, the, Greg has the final version of the Westchester law, and you know what? I don't need to reinvent the wheel. They did a great job with it in Westchester. It passed the county legislature Monday night 17 to zero. So we can tweak it a little bit if we feel, if we, feel we need to, but um, they're very proud of the law that they passed. Uh, I'm very happy with the law that they passed and um, just so happened I spoke to them, I saw it in the paper and why not here in Carmel? All right? So Greg, uh, I have the final version, you can pass it around to everybody, we'll schedule a public hearing. Uh, it, obviously if there's any comments from the board members before we have the public hearing regarding right, right, proposed right. modifications, we can do that and uh, notice the public hearing for Probably the first week in June, if you do it quickly. I'd like I'd like to get it done before the uh, before the school year ends, because the summer is kind of when kids go a little astray. So, if we can do away with it, and and there's no penalties on these businesses unless they're notified that in fact we've passed this law. So that's something that we're going to have to do as well. I I think it's great, um, but I would also suggest that we have it at the state level. And we also do it at the county level like the Westchester County did because having each town having to do it one by one by one by one, if we can get the state to update theirs, then it yeah. encompasses the no. entire state of New York and then all of the children in the yeah. state of New York are covered instead of just the children You're right, um, Susan. in Carmel. Well, children and adults, because it, it's it's all ages. You're you know, I think definitely we move ahead with it, but I yeah. think that there should be as much as a push for Carmel to do it as there is for Putnam County as well as um, the New York State legislation. Right, well, uh, you, the process for us is a little shorter and a little more direct I, to I do know, it right I, away. I know, I worked up in Albany, and I understand right, it. Right, right, no, no, I know you do. And, you know, and you know, hopefully the county will pick it up at some but point. I, I but I think we should send something out 
very soon to the county, yep. possibly give them this and give the state, give Senator Murphy this and just say, can you also do it on your level? Right. Okay, so you, you, you want to, you'd like to mirror? Greg, Greg has the completed, ver oh, okay. Greg, Greg has the completed um, final passed version, that, version passed which I just gave week. him tonight. It just passed Monday night. Yeah. It's not like, you know, it's, is that what it's this is, this, this is the, this is the work, this was the proposed. In 16, the proposed, right? And, and but the there's final, the final, so Greg has the final. I was going to okay. say here. All right. It's probably, it probably virtually. So can you get a copy of the <coughs> final to us, Greg? No. I will, and just I'll need your comments, um, if any, before we notice it for the public hearing. So whatever the content of the law. We is. have a work set. We have yeah. a voting meeting next week, so we could uh, schedule. There's no comment. Hearing. Correct. Um, and next week is 17, so you don't have one on 31st. You have the 7th, right? So it'll be the 7th to the 14th of June. Okay. Be public hearing. 7th to the 14th. 7th to the 14th. Yeah. You don't have a meeting on the 31st, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> no, if, if, I mean, if anybody wanted to speak on it, I know that the chief is here and we had spoken about it today. Chief, did you have any comment on this? Obviously, I know, I spoke to the chief and he's, you know, right. wholly in favor of it. Okay. Uh, I spoke to our DARE officer, Chabarro, and he's, um, he's been working on this kind of stuff for years, so he, he's 100% in favor of it. And we have Steve and Laura here who, um, would you like to come up and say anything? Please. Oh, you need to, okay, got it. No, it's fine. Thanks for a couple of minutes here. So I'm, I'm speaking as a, as a parent and, and a, a, a community member, but also for the last five years, we've been working in the space, as you know. So we know a lot about what's out there and substance abuse and what's going on. These drugs that are you're proposing to cover by this ban are, are not meant for human consumption. These are bad drugs that are simply being um, concocted to create a loophole in the law so that they can be used and, and it's not illegal. And I think for that reason alone, we need to take immediate action because it's dangerous. The, what, the effect that these have on, on the human brain are not even known. These are bad drugs and because they're not meant for human consumption, we don't know, even know what they'll do. In addition, um, we, at Drug Crisis in Our Backyard, we, you know, we pr we're proponents of, a, of a experimenting is n zero tolerance. Not, experimentation is not an option for our young people. By having this loophole and the availability of these drugs, our kids are more apt to get their hands on them. And I think at, at a young age, it's bad enough that an adult might contaminate their mind and who knows, have psychotic episodes. But to a youngster, it de could be devastating, could affect their whole life. So I think we really need to take a leadership role and um, I, I agree that we need it at a state level, but let's take a leadership role and send the message to Albany that this is what we expect, and, and we expect the state to take action as well. So, uh, uh, Frank Lombardi, I really commend you on, on your leadership uh, in this as well as other areas for uh, substance use issues that we've been facing. Good, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, I, I just have a quick question because I know um, your organization is so involved. Is there anything that we can add to this legislation to make it, because what I'm afraid of is, and, and without a doubt we go, we move forward with it, but it seems to me that, that the people are doing these horrible things with the drugs, they're always gonna find a loophole. So I'm wondering if we can get out in front of them and, and put in some type of wording so you know every year or something, a new legislation, I mean, if we have to do it, we'll do it every year. If we have to do it every five months, we'll do it, well, you know, to keep the people safe. But if there was something, some type of verbiage that we can put in it so it can hold, you know, for, for a longer time where the, where the drug dealers can't think of something like, shoot, that's going to be underneath the law. Well, I believe the language in the legislation <laughs> covers similar like substances with for it's, right? it's actually very uh, and, and i'll get you a copy steve but it's actually from the working copy that they had proposed to the final version it, it tripled in size yeah. the the chemical compounds that they've come up with they did a lot of homework they did a lot of research on this so the final version susie i think yeah i, I didn't I, I don't see know the final we're, version yeah, yeah, so no, i i don't yeah. know we have to I'm genericize sure. the like, language so that as you as you change the compound it's still covered that it's Correct. still covered exactly take, take that's a look what i'm at trying to say yeah you can let Susie or myself or anybody on the board know if you have any input before um, 
before the public hearing, and, yeah. and of course, we invite you to be at the public hearing. And I appreciate hearing. that. And, you know, it's a disgrace that people put this out on the street because this but stuff is, it, it's deadly. It, yep. It's unbelievable, and it's just to get high. It's They're spraying another, it on, on grass. I mean, it's, it's not marijuana. They're it's, spraying it on any substance that you can burn and that you ingest it, and just, what it does you know, to the brain, they don't even know. Mm, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. So it, we really it, need to take a lead in it's this. It's just another gateway type of drug. That, that's what it is. Yeah, you know, and you, it's you easy may not to get. Think, and and this, this will, like you said, this will mess you up. You don't it know could change a person's brain. life, a young person's it's life. It could life. ruin their whole life. Yeah, and just ask Frank, to, you know, Officer Chabarro. I mean, he, you know, he knows all too well the, the consequences of, you know, in dealing with some of the videos and, and whatnot that he, that he, that he's. Uh, yeah. So I'm here. I'll be a resource to the, to the council, whatever you'd thank like. You. I appreciate the yeah, chance to speak you. to you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. I, I think all of you are in agreement with this, and I, I am as well, and thank you for inviting me. Um, the only thing I would add is, is whether or not $500 for the fine has enough teeth to make you know, these delis and gas stations stop selling this stuff. That, that's so. the first offense. The second yeah. one is 2000 mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I'm, I'm with you. I think the first offense should be a lot more than five hundred dollars. We can, yeah. we can, yeah, that's fine. We can yeah, change because it. Yeah. I mean, they sell it right in the gas stations. Yeah, no, I know they do. They're in there now. Yeah, they're in the gas stations yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know what they, I, I don't know what they look like or how to buy them, but, <laughs> but yeah. yes, you they are it? in there. Yeah. So. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the that's name of I, like the names are spice. Yeah, thank, thank you. Spice has and been K, outlawed yeah. in, in the 2012. And K and K two. Spice K two. Right, K right. three. These are all banned in the 2012. So right. Maybe you guys can help out because I I remember about seven years ago when I was reading uh, an article in the Marine Times. Department of Defense was the first one as any agency to ban synthetic um, cannabinoids, synthetic opiates. And then that's when we had started discussing back in 2012, looking right. at a local law. New York State at that time had already started one in August. They approved it. The 2012 law specifically lists SPICE K2. It also says on each reference, and this is a bunch of stuff for chemists. I have no idea what they're talking about. But it looks like a lot of these compounds are already referenced in the 12. And it, and it also states things in regards to other names in this structural class include but are not limited to. And then it goes on and lists out the, the composition of nitrogen atoms in, in an indole ring. Yeah. which all seem to relate. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out where this adds to what we already have from 2012, because I think we need to do everything that we possibly can. But it, it already seems like this is pretty encompassing. And I remember back in 2012, I can remember seeing Spice and K2 and all these other things in our, in our almost every gas station. Our town, not too many delis, but almost every gas station had them. I don't see anything like that no. now. I'm in agreement. We, we should do everything we can to be proactive, but I think Susie might be on a better track of, we do this at the county. We would hold a lot more clout at the state level, and the county will pass it just as quick as we will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get Putnam County. We get Dutchess County. We get Rockland County. Now we have the Hudson Valley region saying we have, a, we have an opioid and now a synthetic epidemic that we're addressing at local levels. You at the state have to work with us. Um, whether we, we dual track it and we do it locally and we, and we also try to pressure our county legislator to do the same, I'm all for it. I think whatever we could do to prevent anything like this from getting into the hands not only of our youths but any one of our, our residents. Um, there are just so many unknown effects, whether you take a look at a, a recent high-profile NFL player who apparently had taken some synthetics while he was incarcerated and then hung himself. You take a look at the, the stories that have come out over the past seven years about a lot of celebrities being hospitalized because of these synthetics. It's stuff that uh, we don't have any studies that show how these compounds react to the, the human body, to the human mind, but we have a lot of evidence that shows that there are adverse effects. So we, we should definitely be proactive, but I think we should look not only at our town, we should look at the county as a whole, and we should really try to, to push this through at the county level. I think it would be a bigger benefit um, for the picture as a whole in order to get that movement at the state level. Um, that's just my two cents, but I think we should do everything that we can. And, and if it means doing a law every six months to update a list or trying to do a law that will become all inclusive that says and any future developments that will be related along these lines, uh, I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing to try and prevent what we can going forward. Like I said, the list that was provided to you is not the final list that was passed in the legislation. It's it's three times as uh, three times as many list of compounds. So take a look at that first, and then. But of course, I mean, you know what? Let's start in Carmel. Everything else starts in Carmel, 
and if they pick it up otherwise, you know, we're, we have to take the lead, and if, I'm happy, more than happy to do so. So, so I want to thank you. I appreciate putting the focus on this because I don't know that parents realize all these side effects. We have not had any deaths or any reactions that I'm aware of in our lovely little town, but nationally they're having deaths, and I'm sure Westchester must be having problems because for them to bring this to focus. So you talking about this, whether or not we do it on a town level or like uh, Councilman Schneider is suggesting doing it on a county level Councilwoman and, McDonough. and Councilwoman McDonough, but a county level and also pushing to Rockland and Dutchess, the more publicity, that, the more spotlight you put on it, the better. It's wonderful to do it in the town of Carmel and if we see any, you know, we'll enforce it with either the health department uh, uh, 229 sections or you know, with the town if we pass it as a code, but bringing the focus, bringing the spotlight on these kind of problems, th this is important, and I appreciate that. Um, that's all I wanted to say, and we should have council read the section because it looks to me like the state actually encompasses everything. They, they, it's pretty much a catch-all, um, I think, but there may be loopholes that Westchester sees. I'm not a lawyer. That's why we have council. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Uh, I think it's a great idea, but I, I don't know why there needs to be a list. The problem with the list is they change one compound in that thing, it's a, it's a new product, it's legal. So if it just covers, blanket covers synthetic cannabinoids or opiates, then it's all encompassed in there. The problem with that, you saw how the list changed it, it added 117 more compounds in a year because they figured out the loophole. This is what's covered, we changed one compound, now we have a whole new drug. And it, it doesn't take much for them to change the compound. And as far as being sold in the gas station, I, I haven't seen it um, around here, uh, but there are, you know, uh, like uh, vape shops and head shops that will sell it. Um, but as far as the gas stations, I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't, they don't carry it anymore. Uh, when I, next time I go in, I'll, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure they, they, they don't sell them anymore. Uh, but the, the, the head shops I know probably have a similar type stuff. But that's why I think, I think it's a good idea, but I don't, the list I think is gonna be the loophole because they'll, they'll find a way to get around it and then we're just chasing our tail, catching up to all the compounds. 300% increase in the number of- In the number of compounds. Of compounds from last year to this year. Yeah. So, and that's what you were That's what I was saying, say yeah. make it so broad that they yeah. can't, so that they can't- Blanket synthetics and it's- There is no more loopholes problem. for them. That, that's that's the, the point that I'm trying to get yeah. at, you know? Let's get ahead of them and, you know, just 100%. say no. So Bob, if you can um, do a nice story about this in the paper, that would be wonderful. And maybe we could put it on our website too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the, everybody's saying get it out there, so let's use any and av every the avenue that we yeah. can. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. <clears throat> okay, any further questions or comments regarding uh, this particular item? I think and it's good that we're doing this. Comment. And uh, you know, Greg will uh, draft some craft something go over it. Yeah. Okay. Probably here next week. Yep. So you can make your comments. Yep. Okay. Well, is that going to be enough time? To set the public hearing? Oh, set yeah. the, set yeah. the public yeah, <coughs> And then the public hearing will be in June yeah. the okay. 14th or 7th or the 14th. Yeah, probably the 14th. 14th. Give you enough time. Yeah. All right. All right. To make whatever okay. changes and, and notice right. it appropriately. Okay, that concludes the town board work session items for this evening's town board meeting. Is there any members of the public that would like to come up and comment on any of the agenda items we discussed in the work session? Okay, there being none, uh, anyone here for new business, open forum portion of the meeting? Okay, there being none. Board members, uh, have any comments? I do have, we do have some now announcements that we have to make, so John, could you pass that down to Susie? She can make that. Mother's Day is, yeah. mo is Sunday. Which, that? Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. On the service no, I was just going to say Happy oh, Mother's yeah, Day to one. all the moms. You want to do that one, John? Uh, you, you guys, guys can take it. No, I, I said want. Happy Mother's Day to all, all the moms, moms. for yeah. Sunday. Okay, yes, absolutely. All right, John, you want to read that one? Sure, the Town of Carmel uh, Recreation and Parks Department presents Music Fest. It will be on Saturday, May 20th. Time is 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Mahopak Chamber Park, right in town, or the, or the Hamlet, I should say. Uh, the rain date will be um, the following day on Sunday, May 21st. 
It was fun to fill a day of free yeah. music and entertainment yeah. of all ages, you did the including okay. local you bands, bounce house, face painting, popcorn, and cotton candy. So uh, again, Music Fest is May 20th, it's a Saturday, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Chamber Park in the hamlet of Mahopa. Okay, great, thanks, John. Okay, Jonathan. Um, starting this, uh, looks like, starting this Sunday, through the end of the week is gonna be Food Allergy Awareness Week. Um, this is to bring awareness to uh, individuals who are suffering from food allergies. I know it seems like uh, more people these days especially are becoming affected by food allergies, whether it be from the environment, from whatever the speculation is, but it's something to be aware of. Every school has a nut-free table, <coughs> latex-free table. Um, just bring an awareness to it. Try to be cognizant of it. People unfortunately die every year from uh, food allergy related illnesses, um, things that could be easily be prevented. So if you know someone who has a food allergy or you have someone in your family with a food allergy, please uh, bring it to the attention of those you love and those around you and those that supervise your children who may have food allergies to ensure their safety. Great, thanks Jonathan. Right, Frank. <clears throat> please be advised that the Green Mountain Pipeline Services will continue with the lining of Carmel Sewer District 1 and Carmel Sewer District Number 3 systems. The following is the proposed schedule for week of May 15th. Um, May 15th, Route 6, there will be three services will be interrupted. May 16th, C Avenue and, Har and Harbor Lane will have no service interruption. 17th, Harbor Lane and Route 6, no service interruption. And the 18th, Thompson Avenue and Woodlawn, no services will be interrupted. Notices have or will be handed out to the residents and businesses affected by this work. Additional notices will be handed out 24 hours prior to the work being performed. Please check the Town of Carmel website, uh, and which will be updated on Thursday, May 11th, tomorrow, or contact the engineering department for additional information. Okay, thank you, Frank. All right, I have a final announcement. The Lions Club International it's District 20-R1. They are currently forming the new Mahopac Lions Club in Mahopac. There, years ago, there was a Mahopac Lions Club, and uh, <clears throat> it disbanded for whatever reason, and the Lions Club International is trying to bring one back for Mahopac, so they're trying to organize. So uh, in, in their attempts to organize, they're going to have an organizational meeting, and on Friday, May 19th, at 5 p.m. at Amore Restaurant, which is on Route 37, 376, Route 6, Mahopac, New York. And there's club organizers, Angelo Perchilati, and there's a phone number here for him and an email address, and Corinne Stanton. I think a lot of us know Corinne. She's uh, very active in the community with the Chamber of Commerce and, and um, advertising for businesses locally, and she has a phone number here too. So if you're interested in joining the Lions Club, that is being reorganized and reconstituted in Mahopac. You can uh, reach out to any one of these two individuals here. You can contact my office at 628-1470 and, and we'll give you the contact individual's um, information. But they're having an organizational meeting if you'd like to just attend that on Friday, May 19th, 2017, 5 p.m. Amori Restaurant right down the road here at Route 3, 376, Route 6, Mayopac. Okay, that's all we have for tonight. We do have executive session, and we're going to be meeting with Police Chief Mike Kazari and Lieutenant John Dearman to discuss personnel matters. So we're going to be closing the meeting from executive session. We will not be coming back out here, so I need a motion to go into executive so session. Moved. Second. So moved by Councilman Lombardi, seconded by Councilman Lopinacci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Be well. We will see you next week for a town board voting meeting. Yes.